Alright, so quick heads up uh, before the video starts. Yes, this is the video that um, I had planned for you guys yesterday, but I ended up scrapping it and doing it over just because I wanted to do a little bit more and add a little bit more to it and, you know, basically help the point get, a you know, across to you guys a little bit more. But um, before I start, man, I just want to say thank you to everybody who came through and wished me well to everybody who's still been there as friends and, you know, viewers, all that. Thank you guys so much. I do appreciate the support, the love. It just shows that a lot of you understand where I'm coming from. It shows that I have done and succeeded what I've always wanted to succeed here on YouTube. And that's build a following and build an audience, but also get to know and understand you. And all of you got to know that with me, you know, and Thank you guys so much for just being a part of my life and always coming through for the videos, whether you can make a podcast or a video or hell, even if you can go back, let's say you missed a week and you just went back and watched whatever I dropped in the past. All that means the world to me because it shows that you at least appreciate the work that I do and you're willing to, you know, listen and, and definitely give me a chance to be heard. Especially when you share a video, it, it helps reach others. And when you like a video, it helps the channel again. Just thank you so very, very much. Today marks the change that I talked about yesterday. Today marks the new attitude that I have towards, you know, everything. And um, hopefully you guys enjoy. And if you do, I would very like it and appreciate it if you guys hit the like button, share the videos out from this point forward, and definitely subscribe if you are new. But um, this is definitely the channel that is, that's, this is basically what my channel should have been back when I first got into the whole drama. And um, hopefully, again, we're, you know, we can definitely move on and go even further beyond. OK, so once again, this is for you guys. Thank you guys so much for pushing me to be the YouTuber that I know I can be and the YouTuber that I know I want to be. So thank you. And um, from this point on, whatever support I get, you know, if you stick around or you decide to leave hey, just know that it was an honor to do everything I did for you guys. But times have changed and um, I most certainly need to change as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start this video. Let's get into this gaming news, and let's definitely look forward to a brighter future for all of us, for all gamers of all particular, you know, uh, <laughs> platforms of choice and everything. And uh, let's definitely be family at the end of the day. All right. Without further ado, let the video commence. See you there. This is a news production. So it is no surprise that PlayStation is most certainly getting, you know, up to date with what's happening on the market. It's no, you know, secret that Sony is definitely looking into newer avenues in terms of making money and involving the PlayStation brand. Now, Microsoft has most, cer uh, most certainly set an example for uh, Sony and Nintendo, if you think about it, with Game Pass. And we're most certainly going to get into this and we're going to break this down. Now, if you guys did not hear, and yes, there's a lot of talk and speculation, but a lot of talk really about, you know, how Sony is thinking about bringing PlayStation now to other devices. Now, if I remember correctly, back in 2014, they did talk about that in 2014. In 2014, they did talk about bringing their services to TVs, consoles, and phones. But I understand where people are coming from. A lot of people are definitely a little like upset because you know people really went after Microsoft and. When you look at Microsoft and the whole situation, well, in order for us to truly get to why people are acting that way towards Microsoft, um, well, we're going to have to break it down pretty much. So for Microsoft and Sony, I guess I'll start with Sony since it's the easiest one out of the bunch. When it comes to PlayStation Now, for PlayStation Now, for one month, you pay $10, very similar to what Game Pass is doing, but we'll get to that in a second. For $45, you get three months, $100 for a year. 
if you go down you get access to over 700 games ranging from ps1 ps2 ps3 and a few selected ps4 titles and games can be streamed and downloaded to your ps4 as well and of course new games are being added to it each particular month when it comes to microsoft and game pass game pass has been quite a bit of a stretch for microsoft they actually have made quite a bit of revenue from game pass and with game pass <coughs> excuse me uh, Game Pass doesn't really have a sophisticated plan or anything in that nature. It's literally one payment of $10 a month. And for that one payment of $10 a month, you do get access to a variety of uh, Xbox games ranging from first party titles, you know, and all that on the service. But also, here's where they start to differ. When it comes to Game Pass and when it comes to PlayStation Now, PlayStation Now does offer some PS4 exclusives on the service, but not all PlayStation exclusives are on the service. When it comes to Xbox Game Pass, you have access to all first party titles on the service at launch of the service. And of course, you have you can download and play all these games on your PC, whatever you want. But there is a few cool things you can get to if you buy a game through Game Pass. Let's say you really want it, you do get 20% off the game. Plus, you can get up to 10% off the related add on So that's another cool little thing they got going on there. And when it comes to the library of games, the library of Game Pass is not on par with PlayStation Now. PlayStation Now has over 700 games on the service, but that's mostly because Sony has been in the business longer than Microsoft. So over you know the time Sony's been on the market and X amount of things, they have an insane library of over 700 games. When it comes to Game Pass, Microsoft is doubling down on studios and that's why they purchased so many with many others are you know that are really focused on bringing that library to life on game pass more games are being worked on as we speak and the library will continue to grow through these new particular studios you know supporting game pass and since game pass is going to be microsoft's priority and one of their big priorities going into the xbox scarlet especially their new ecosystem it's most certainly going to be you know it's going to change the numbers are the most certainly going to go up okay now again i understand again where people are going to come from and people might go well you know i have no problem with a game being on another platform and sure sure you might not but that's where people are coming from what they're basically saying is if it's on another platform x amount of things then that kind of devalues you buying the actual xbox console as is but that's where the argument is okay and that's what the argument is that's what it's about i understand that people do not really you know care about the whole exclusive thing some people do not others do and that's where some people are going to differ in opinion so for sure but um that's pretty much it when it comes to the whole situation you know what i'm saying game pass and the whole xbox game pass are definitely still going to be on the you know on the table going into the playstation 5 and here's why playstation 5 is most likely going to be doing something different with playstation now and could possibly be going a streaming route if you think about it so they have a new job listing okay the new job listing is talking about you know like a, a few priorities basically and the tech of the playstation 5 okay so according to the job listing, um, Sony posted a new job listing for PlayStation from what we know so far about PlayStation 5. Uh, we think it might be safe to assume that the position is related to Sony's next generation console. Cloud computing and cloud gaming could end up being a huge part of what makes the PS5 tick. And Sony is seeking a cloud gaming engineer to help with this uh, situation. If you actually read the fine print of it, um, they're pretty much what does it say? They're basically looking for an engineer to ensure a smooth cloud gaming and online experience for its users. The company is looking for an extremely experienced cloud engineer to implement content delivery network systems, which should uh, take part of the processing strain of the hardware itself when playing games online or in the cloud. So that's what Sony is looking for when it comes to the cloud engineer. But they do go off a little bit more when it comes to the actual um, patent or not the patent but the actual uh job listing itself 
Um, this says this may be where the PlayStation 5 is going. AMD president and CEO Lisa Su already confirmed in an interview with Jim Cramer that AMD is working with Sony on the secret sauce that will make the PS5 tick. She wasn't very subtle about it. Moments later and throughout the interview, she claimed that cloud computing and cloud gaming will be a priority and that they're working with not only Sony, but also Microsoft to make the most of that technology. What that means for you and to me is still a mystery. We could see a PS5 with no disk drive. We could see a next generation console that requires a decent internet connection and plug to play you know, or to fully enjoy, we could see PlayStation capable of running games that high end PC gamers would drool over thanks to the cloud or not. Whether the tech is there for such a device is still, you know, still the um, debatable. So that's what he had to say about that. Now, we could go with that and say that's the reason why Sony is looking for cloud engineers. We could go into the fact that Sony is going to go uh, full Microsoft with the Xbox Scarlet the way they're going. But there's one particular thing that they didn't really mention in this. And this is why I kind of have more than one source where I go to my news. One particular source and one that kind of supports my theory is that they're actually looking for new ways to incorporate backwards compatibility. Now... Um, one second. Backwards compatibility has not been on Sony's priority for the longest. It hasn't. It hasn't been one of their priorities, if you think about it. And for all the right reasons, you could think about it. For, for the right reasons. If you look at the PlayStation 3 that launched in 20... What was it? 2006, actually. And the PS3 launched in 2006. They literally super packed everything with the PlayStation 3. From backwards compatibility to PS1 and PS2 titles. It had extra, you know... Um, it supported any memory card type. It had all that. I mean, it literally was overpacked, uh, an overpowered, you know, CPU chip at the time, and it had, you know, the new Blu-ray disc at the time as well. I mean, they really overpacked the PS3 at the time, and Sony didn't really think about backwards compatibility with the PS4 for the obvious reasons. Nobody really used backwards compatibility with the PS4, but backwards compatibility has become somewhat of a topic over the years, and I don't think they still are going to do it at all. What I think they're going to do is they're actually going to look for a new way of doing it. Notice how they have PlayStation Now and PlayStation Now, again, continues to come into the light as we speak about their future. PlayStation Now, especially with the ability for them to now download games to your system, they're probably doing something different with PS5 to where you actually can seamlessly download these particular games to your uh, hard drive and everything and have your, you know, your backwards compatibility. Though somebody might say, but still, I don't want to pay for that sort of thing. It should be free. Tell you the truth, you're going to have to pay for it as well. I'm pretty sure a lot of us don't have a lot, all our PS3 and PS2 games. Not a lot of us. Some of us do. A select, you know, a few of us do it. But not everybody has their PS2, PS1, and PS3 games just sitting around. Okay? Not everybody has it. You know, a lot of us tend to move on when it comes to PlayStation games. But I think that's what they're doing. You know, especially with this. I mean, it's, it has that potential for them to do that. And I think that's what most likely is on the table ps5 is most certainly going to be um uh, it's going to be one of those uh devices that they're definitely trying to future proof and i think they are most certainly focusing on that and if it does deliver those particular aspects you know it's going to be interesting but what really got me excited about playstation 5 is not necessarily just the rumors that's going around but the specification that continue to be, you know, thrown around. I think it's safe to say that I could put up a certain thing on the screen. I'm going to do that in one second. But um, the reason why I'm actually okay with that, putting that on the screen for you guys, and I'm actually excited for 2019 even more, is that Sony continues just to uh, confirm what my speculations have always been. In 2019, you are most certainly getting the PS5 reveal. That is the question. Without a question, you're getting it. Whether it will launch in 2019 remains to be seen. But Sean Layton hitting at, you know, 2019 that there's going to be some big reveals. And The Last of Us Part 2 doesn't have a release date at the time. Nor does Ghost of Tsushima or Death Stranding, but it's rumored to be 2019, but it's not confirmed. Um, you know, you have to go by the information here. And judging from what we saw here, Sony just teased the PlayStation 5 for the holiday. If you guys look at the actual image in front of you, what do you see? It says PlayStation <laughs> and then you just see like you know the background right that's all you see but if you pay close attention to the s it's actually a five 
Sony low-key just teased the PlayStation 5 for 2019. And this goes back to what Sean Layton said in that on Twitter in that comment saying, look forward to 2019. So without a doubt, Sony is most certainly doubling down and getting ready for 2019 for a big reveal for the PlayStation 5. Now, as far as the PlayStation 5 is uh, concerned, let's go to the PlayStation 5. Now, you guys remember the specifications. Now, this right here was the last... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. This was the last uh, confirmed specification that we got for the PlayStation 5. The last confirmed one was the fact that Sony was going to be using an 8-core Ryzen CPU. But one particular thing about these specifications was the price. The price is rumored to be $500. Now, the reason why I would actually believe this to be true, and actually I'm actually, I'm actually going to play this too while I say this. So let's go ahead and play that. But um, the reason why I believe that this is actually true is... And for $500, I think they would go for that. It's because there's no way Sony would ever take a gamble and launch another $600 console. And there's no way Sony would ever put themselves in that situation again. You know what I'm saying? Sony can't afford to launch a $600 console, especially with how well the business is thriving now that PlayStation has regained itself. It's regained its footing in the marketplace. I don't see Sony doing that. I really don't. Okay. Now, Microsoft could possibly have the more, the more powerful console and at the same time it could have the more expensive console but this all can go as planned and go by the leaks that we got or the information that was supposedly you know given to us by um a few supposed insiders but the information was that microsoft was launching two xbox uh, scarlets for next gen one is going to be the powerful base which is the anaconda and of course of course you have the maverick the maverick is supposed to be the xbox one s equivalent of that a less expensive option so if that's the less expensive option for the mainstream gamer again that's what microsoft possibly is going for with the xbox scarlet especially with the new ways of trying to get people into it so you know that's could be true but as far as the whole rumor is concerned with sony using the eight core ryzen cpu and being 500 dollars, and of course using the navi gpu architecture and whatnot or not, not architecture but navi gpu sorry uh, it all it's all falling the place to me i think this is actually true i do believe that this could very well be true and this could be the information that, you know, we all have been waiting for. But of course, only time will tell and we will see, you know. But if Microsoft does have the power advantage again, like they did, um, like they do now for this generation. See, this generation was pretty telling. Sony had the power advantage at the start. Then it slowly shifted to Microsoft towards the end, right? With this generation pretty much in the bag, it always came down to the games, Yes, Sony had the more powerful console at the start, but they also had some very compelling games at the start that pushed it along the way. And as the can, you know, as the console generation kind of wrapped up, you know, or started to wrap up, and they slowly lost the title of world's most powerful console, right? They still had the crazy games that pushed it along the way. So my advice for Microsoft, if you're going to have the world's most powerful console again in that title, do not focus on the headline. Focus on the games because that's what it's going to come down to in the long run. And from what Sony showed this generation, well, it's pretty obvious which one delivered for sure. You know, it's pretty obvious. But um, that's pretty much it. I think that's all the news I got for you guys. I do have another one, but I'm going to save that for a separate video after this. Okay? So if you guys enjoyed the video, definitely hit the like button. I do appreciate it. If you didn't, hit the dislike. But that's um, that's all the information I got for you guys. Thank you guys again for checking it out. If you guys you know enjoyed all that jazz, you already know what to do. I just said it, but <laughs> I'm most certainly out of here. And I'm um, go ahead and get to work on this other one. All right? Y'all be good, and um, I'll see you guys later. Deuces.